This episode of Physics Girl is supported by Squarespace. Share your passion with the world. Putting my phone in the microwave. <laughs> Do not turn it on. Diana Cowan. All right, it's in there. Oh, it's ringing. definitely ringing. Oh, look at that. This was surprising to me. The microwave let through a cellular signal. My thinking before I did any research on the subject is that a microwave should act like a Faraday cage. The basic idea of a Faraday cage is that when an electric field or some electromagnetic waves, like those from a cell phone, hit the enclosure, they cause electrons in the metal to move and create an electric field to exactly oppose and to cancel out the external field. So whatever's inside feels nothing. I thought that microwaves should act like Faraday cages, keeping signals out and microwave radiation in when you're cooking your food. But this one obviously leaks, so I had to try more microwaves. Do you think it's gonna ring? Okay, so let me think. I think it will. You think it will? And you're gonna call me? Mm. It's not ringing. It's ringing. Yeah, so it's not ringing. Oh my god. It's ringing! How is this happening? Now it we have to figure out why this is. It depends on the microwave. I wanted to know why, but I was also really curious what part of the microwave is leaking. So we first tested what I was sure would be a good Faraday cage. Nothing? Two rings and voicemail, so I don't think it went through. Then we covered the whole microwave door in aluminum foil. This is what happens to my friend's microwaves when they ask me to dog sit. <laughs> it's not ringing. So it's leaking somewhere around the microwave door. So microwave, not a good radio wave cage. Microwave. Right. Right? Those are, those are receiving microwaves? Are they? Okay, time to figure out what frequency of electromagnetic radiation cell phones and microwaves are using. That's what Kyle and I weren't sure about. Because if microwaves are getting in at my phone, is microwave radiation getting out while I'm cooking my food? That's what we all want to know, right? I'm Sammy Kampkar. In general, I call myself a hacker. So, so this, this receives radio frequency signals. This receives and transmits. This device is awesome. It measures and emits radio frequency signals between one megahertz and six gigahertz. Our cell phone and microwave radiation should be in that range. And we're using GQRX software, which is a spectrum analyzer, to look at a range of frequencies. Sammy first demonstrated the device to me with a car key fob, which also emits radio frequency signals. When I actually hold this down, we can actually see a signal. We see two frequencies. The numbers show the range of frequencies you're looking at. Above that is a live view of the signals in that range, like these two peaks from the key fob, and down below it records when you detected signals. I don't know why it's so cool to see it in graph form, it but is so it cool is. Because yeah, you know, you can finally visibly see it, right? So you just changed it to 700, which is one of the cellular frequencies. So we have a phone call going on. Hello, hello, hello. And every time we talk, you can see some of the signals coming up. Now, what happens to that signal when we put my phone and the HackRF detector in a Faraday cage? This is like legit. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is like a legit Faraday cage. There is a mesh. So there... if you look closely, oh, that, yeah. that, that's a metal mesh. All right, I'm gonna put my phone in here. Okay. And then I wanna close it and, okay. and see what happens to the data. So... It's already way less. Yeah, nothing. My phone is still on, but it's not transmitting anything. Oh, interesting. So we're not seeing it trying to communicate. Yeah. Right? Just radio silence. Yep. Faraday cage works. <laughs> so let's go up to 2.4 where we know there's a bunch of stuff. That's yeah. Connected. So we, we see we see blips. And that's where Wi-Fi is on the spectrum. A common Wi-Fi frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. So now we've seen what happens to the cell phone signal when you put it in a real Faraday cage, and we've gotten great measurements of that. It's time to figure out what frequency microwave oven radiation is. But first, phone's in your microwave. I think the phone call will not go through because I believe my microwave is awesome. Let's see, moment of truth. It's still not ringing. Yes. <laughs> Can we try one more thing? Because I actually haven't tried this yet. Yeah. On this experiment, I turned cellular frequencies off, I turned Wi-Fi on, and I had Sammy call me through the Wi-Fi network on FaceTime to see whether Wi-Fi signals get through. FaceTiming now. Ah, oh, look at that. Wow, so 2.4 is still reaching through my microwave. Yeah, which is interesting because Wi-Fi is closer to microwaves that you use to cook your food. Mm. Did you hear that? 
One of the most surprising things about all of this for me was that Wi-Fi uses 2.4 gigahertz and most microwave ovens use 2.45 gigahertz. In fact, your microwave oven probably says 2450 megahertz on it. On older microwaves that leaked a lot more and, and uh, we didn't have, I think, uh, the, the regulations? Yeah, as many regulations uh, on that, you would actually find that, let's say, older Wi-Fi, would your Wi-Fi would just go out when you microwave something. Please. No way. Checks out. So there's just one more thing to try. We're gonna keep the spectrum on the same 2.4 gigahertz range and see whether we can detect any microwave oven radiation from outside the microwave. Three, two, one, start. So now I'm gonna stop. Stop. Yep. Definitely. Definitely leaking. You can see it right there. Well, there it is. At least this microwave oven leaks a small amount. So should you be worried? Well, the FDA regulates microwaves and they even allow for a small bit of leakage. And remember, microwave radiation is not ionizing, so it couldn't damage your DNA directly. The risk is of heating up your tissues, but that's only with super concentrated amounts of microwave radiation. You're in more danger of burning yourself on the water you heated up in the microwave. So I have some last thoughts on this whole experience, which was that the results of the experiment depended on the microwave. But there were some things I didn't keep constant, like the age of the microwave, where the microwave was in the house, how close it was to a cellular tower. So these things might have affected the results of the experiment. The other thing that was interesting is that with Sammy's microwave, the cellular frequencies did not get through, but the microwave frequencies did. Now this might be demonstrating a property of Faraday cages, which is that there can be holes in the cage, but they should be much smaller than the wavelength of the frequencies you're trying to block. So since cellular frequencies have a longer wavelength than Wi-Fi frequencies, it's possible that we were seeing a hole that was somewhere between the wavelength of those two signals. Physics works. Happy physicsing, and thank you for watching. Physics Girl is supported by Squarespace. If you have an idea or project you're itching to show the world, you should. Squarespace provides tools that help people showcase their passions with a customizable landing page, website, or online store. They also offer domains, hosting, and customer support. Start your trial at squarespace.com slash physicsgirl. Thanks again to Sammy Kamkar who let me use all of his toys. You can check out his YouTube channel. It's called Applied Hacking. I'll put the link in the description. And thank you to Architect that let me use the Lightning Faraday cage footage.